Leadership wise, I think Hayley Nolan's stepping up massively. She's, I think, probably one of our most technically rounded players, as far as she sees the pitches as well as can execute what she wants to. Leaders come in different ways. Some are allowed, some lead by example, you know, some maybe have quiet conversations with people. Um, but I think my leadership style is probably by leading by example and kind of showing people this is what you have to do um, if you want to get better and if you want to keep improving. The women's game isn't like the men's. I'm not going to walk away with that amount of money in my pocket. You've got to be prepared for afterwards. I went to University of Hartford for five years. I studied economics and finance for my undergrad, and then I moved on to do my MBA. I'm going into this thing called Ultimate Goal, which is like 30 girls in an academy who come in, and you know, we train for a week, and it gets cut down, cut down to 16 players. And then after that, we play an 11 v 11 on a Friday with like some scouts there. I think you'll definitely thrive in that environment like you're so mentally strong like your freshman year you were able to start and play every single game even though like you didn't even know any of the girls or like the teams or anything so it'll definitely be awesome the american situation came about in a bad moment for me in the irish side i had just gone called up to an under 17 camp and they were going away to austria for a euro qualifying game and i actually didn't make the team the same week that they were going to austria I had lined up to go to Dallas um, to do this Dallas Cup in America, and I had no idea about the college system at all. Went there, had a ball, the greatest time ever, and actually a couple of coaches from there came up to me and said, do you want to play um, college football? And I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. Because it's a professional setup, but you also get your college degree. Moving from Ireland to America was quite difficult at the start. I was quite homesick. I was only 18. In the first couple of months, I became independent quite quickly. I became quite outgoing a little bit more just because, you know, when you're thrown into those environments, you kind of either sink or swim. But obviously I miss like obviously the college, exp you know, you're kind of like in a bubble in, in college. And it was a nice five yeah. years. Living in the States was quite busy and that's quite similar to London. And that's why I like it. That's why I kind of came to London in the first place because I love Connecticut. I kind of wanted the same vibe and that same fast atmosphere. Join me this week as I attempt to reach the ultimate goal. I played in the States for five years at national level, underage, and recently at senior level, so I really think that I can make the step up. <laughs> Not a lot of people can turn around when they're older and go, oh yeah, I was a professional uh, soccer player, you know? So I think that, that would be my ultimate goal. I think a lot of people were focused and they were like, wow, we are actually in the last 16. We're going to play a game on Friday. There's going to be clubs there, scouts there, um, agents, whatever. And I think everyone just kind of switched on. Hayley, as quiet as she is, you know, she's very specific left, right, press. Yeah, I'm straight ahead of you. Yep. So the people that actually affect people positively on the pitch and make good decisions for me are the best leaders. I want to play in the Champions League, I want to play in World Cups, I want to play in European qualifiers, like some of the girls who have come to see us through the master classes. That's what I want to do, and that's what I aspire to do. I'm extremely happy to be at London City, but for me, I want to be the best player that I can be, and that means playing in the best leagues, playing at top level. I'm originally from Dublin. My family are big sport people. My dad actually was a coach of a local boys team. He dragged me along to some of the games, to some of the training sessions. And then eventually I actually did join a boys team called Kill Celtic. I was there until about 14. What you need to do is be like when you were playing with all the boys in Kill Celtic. Yeah. Yeah, you were like the only girl playing. So you got to have that hunger again when you compete against these thirsty girls. So when you first join a boys team, obviously I think a lot of girls are like this. They don't pass the ball. So obviously you get a little bit tough skin from that. So I think it really helped my development when I was younger. Like, how are you going to make yourself different to everyone? I don't know, just go in and just play my best, just be confident. You need to be playing competitively, so. My two older sisters also played football. Both of them gave up around 11 or 12. They went on to play different sports at higher levels. Katie played volleyball and tennis. Sarah played these Irish sports called Gaelic football and camogie. When we were playing against Clane and camogie, and it was like me, you, and Sarah in the back line, and 
this girl out, Sarah and the shin, with the, with the stick. Um, her. <laughs> and she wasn't wearing any shin guards. And so you went and... <gasps> you hit her in the shin on purpose. <laughs> on purpose? <laughs> any siblings, you know, you want to be better than your sisters. And usually, in most cases, the older sisters are better. So definitely a bit of competitive edge came out on me because I found out that, oh, I'm a little bit better at football, so I'm going to take this route so then I can show them that I'm better than them at something. After seeing you being so successful in the volleyball side and in tennis, going to watch your games and everything, and everyone was like, oh, you're Katie's sister. And I would rather people say, no, that's Haley's sister. I want to be Haley's sister. So girls, what are we looking for in a leader? From what I learnt from the Freddie Lundberg Masterclass, you don't have to be a baller, a screamer, or a shouter. What you need is someone who sets standards, mm -hmm. um, someone who leads by example. Both Haley and Sue, if you were to ask all the other players in the squad, do you trust them? Yeah. I think yeah. absolutely it's a resounding yeah. You know, on and off the pitch, I'm talking, and that, for me, makes those two stand out. And trust was the first word, actually, that the group sort of picked out in terms of the core values of what they want to kind of be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a 10-day team. 